title, The Boundless Love and Forgiveness of God, A Journey of Redemption Through Christ. In a world where love often seems conditional and forgiveness elusive, there exists a divine embrace that transcends all human understanding, the love and forgiveness of God. It is a love that knows no bounds, reaching out to us in our deepest moments of despair and offering redemption through His Son, Jesus Christ. From the beginning of time, God's love has been woven into the fabric of creation, a testament to His unending grace and mercy. In Genesis, we see the story of Adam and Eve, who, despite their disobedience, were clothed in garments of mercy by a compassionate Creator. This act of love foreshadowed the ultimate expression of God's love, the sacrifice of His only Son for the salvation of mankind. John 3 verse 16 beautifully encapsulates this divine love, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is through the selfless act of Jesus Christ laying down His life on the cross that we find forgiveness and reconciliation with God. His blood, shed for us, is the atonement for our sins, offering us a pathway to redemption and eternal life. The journey of forgiveness begins with acknowledging our need for a Savior. Romans 3 verse 23 reminds us that, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None of us are exempt from the stain of sin, but it is through the acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that we find forgiveness and restoration. 1 John 1 verse 9 assures us, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession is not merely an admission of guilt, but a surrendering of our brokenness to the loving arms of our Heavenly Father. It is in this act of humility and repentance that we experience the fullness of God's forgiveness and grace. But God's love does not stop at forgiveness, it extends to restoration and transformation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 declares, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are made new, clothed in righteousness, and empowered to live a life that reflects the love and forgiveness we have received. As recipients of God's boundless love and forgiveness, we are called to extend the same grace and mercy to others. Ephesians 4 verse 32 implores us to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Our ability to forgive others flows from the understanding of the immeasurable forgiveness we have received from God. God's Forgiveness Men hold grudges. When we do wrong to our fellow man and then repent and apologize, often it is the case that the one we have wronged will say I forgive you, and will go ahead and hold a grudge against you. They forgive, but they do not forget and the very next time you offend them, they remind you of your past offenses and make it clear that they are still holding them against you. God is not like men, He does not hold grudges against us for our past mistakes, so long as we are penitent and seek God's forgiveness through His Son Jesus the Christ. The Human Cycle of Sin It is a part of the human condition to struggle with sin. Each of us may have one particular sin that we struggle with the most often. Perhaps we have committed this sin many times over a period of years. Each time we transgress in that area we feel guilty and we genuinely repent. We know it is wrong and we make ourselves a pledge that we will not commit this particular sin again. We pray that we will be delivered from the temptation with regard to this sin and for the next several months, we are successful in our attempts to overcome it. After some time has gone by, we lose a little bit of our vigilance in this area. It is at this point that perhaps we have a bad couple of days. Either we are very tired or very stressed and this temptation comes before us. And because we are at a moment of weakness and are alone, we give in to the temptation once more. Afterward, we come to ourselves, realizing that have done it again, and are struck with grief and self-loathing over it. We are genuinely sorry for the sin and we repent of it. Once more we pray for forgiveness, 
and for strength in the face of temptation. Once more we dedicate ourselves to never committing this sin again, and for the next several weeks or months we are very vigilant toward it. Then as time goes by we go through a tough stretch. Either we are very tired or very stressed and this temptation comes before us. And because we are at a moment of weakness and are alone, we give in to the temptation once more. Afterward, we come to ourself, realizing that have done it again, and are struck with grief and self-loathing all over again. Questions about forgiveness Maybe this sequence has played itself out many times in your life and you begin to feel as if you will never overcome it. Perhaps you start thinking that maybe you really have never truly repented and start to question whether God will forgive you again this time. After all, you think, if you had truly repented the times before, you would not have committed the same sin again. Or maybe, you think that God will not believe that you have truly repented and will give up on you. So the question arises in your mind, is there a limit to God's forgiveness? Is there a point at which God will no longer forgive my sins? The Limitless Forgiveness of God Peter asked our Lord the same question with regard to forgiving others, but the same principle applies to God's forgiveness. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times, Matthew 18 verse 21. Some in that day were teaching that one only had to forgive someone three times, and that after a fourth transgression, no forgiveness was necessary. God's forgiveness, Oak Grove Church of Christ. But notice Jesus' answer to this question, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven, Matthew 18 verse 22. The number seventy times seven, 490, is not to be taken literally in this case, but what he is saying, in essence, is that we must forgive our brother every time he repents. Notice what Jesus said in Luke. Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Luke 17 verses 3 to 4. Observe that forgiveness with our brother is conditioned upon his repentance, just like our forgiveness with God is conditioned upon our repentance. If we are to forgive our brother every time he repents without any limitations, then it stands to reason that with God it is the same. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9 God will forgive his children each time they repent of their sins, without fail and without exception. The one who thinks that God will stop forgiving them because they cannot seem to break the cycle of sin is mistaken. The only sins that God will not forgive are impenitent sins committed out a spirit of rebellion against him. The very fact that a Christian is earnestly struggling against sin in his life and sincerely repenting of his sins shows that he has not committed this type of sin. When we first became a Christian, every sin that we had committed prior to our obedience to the gospel was forgiven. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews 10 verses 16 to 17 God forgives and then he forgets and treats the sin as if it never occurred. In conclusion, the love and forgiveness of God are the cornerstones of our faith, guiding us on a journey of redemption and reconciliation with our Heavenly Father. Through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, 
we are offered forgiveness for our sins and the promise of eternal life. May we embrace this profound truth and extend the same love and forgiveness to others, reflecting the heart of our gracious and merciful God. Amen. For further reflection on God's love and forgiveness, visit our family playlist with the title Bible Messages then click on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to watch what God's love did for us even while we were yet sinners. If you have enjoyed this documentary don't forget to hit the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, also your likes, comments, shares are highly appreciated. Thanks from the manager of Avuncular Services, Akegbula David.